This episode of Trojan TV is sponsored by Don Orr for all your ski and beach needs. Welcome to Trojan TV. I'm Grace. And I'm Lauren. Can you believe it's November already? Time is sure flying by. It really is. But we've already had a lot of fun things happening here at East. Like last week's Fall Fun Week was great timing with Halloween and the big Michigan-Michigan State rivalry game. Agreed. Here's a recap of the week and Jordan hit the halls to find out who staff cheer for on game day. Let's take a look. Hey guys, today me and Landon hit the halls for this week's Man on the Street. We interviewed staff to see what their opinion is on the Michigan vs. State game. I am rooting for Michigan State. This is for on Saturday night at 7.30. That's who I'll be cheering for. Okay. And why? Well, at my, in my family, we have six siblings total, and four out of six went to Michigan State. Okay. Uh, which team do you think is going to win? Pass. Why? I'm realistic, but it's a rivalry game. Go green! So why would you say you root for Michigan? I root for Michigan because my family's always rooted for Michigan, so I feel like I have to back up my family. Um, but if I had to choose, I do actually like Michigan a little bit more than Michigan State, so I say go blue. Is it because they're probably better this year? Um, well, actually, growing up, before I decided to go to Purdue, I actually did have a little bit of a fandom for Michigan. My uh, PlayStation uh, username was actually around the University of Michigan, so it kind of brings me back to my elementary days. But nonetheless, I am a Purdue graduate. And go Bulls. I am rooting for Michigan State. Okay. Why? Because <gasps> I am diehard green and white. It flows through my veins. So, and... When I was little, I liked the color green and white better than blue and gold, so as that's how it started. Who are you going to be rooting for this Saturday? I'm not really rooting for either one, which is why I'm wearing this instead of blue or green. Uh, why? I have family on both sides that support either team, and uh, they've always tried to suck me into that competition. Uh, I didn't go to either college. I don't really have any personal connection to either college, so for me, I think it's almost more fun to refuse to answer whatever students are bugging me about. Which one do you want? Because they just want to hear me say the one they like. This has been Landon Jordan reporting for Trojan TV. Thanks guys, now let's get into some school news and announcements. The EMS cookie dough fundraiser is still underway. Continue to sell cookies through Thanksgiving break and be ready to turn in your order forms and money when you return. All money and order forms must be turned into your wing office no later than December 1st. And speaking of Thanksgiving break, mark your calendars Trojans as there is no school November 23rd through the 25th. School resumes Monday the 28th. EMS is excited to be starting a student lounge that will be open to students to visit during their lunch and recess time. The vision is to create an inviting space for students to promote social connections in a calm environment. Drew caught up with Mrs. Sovis to find out more. I'm Drew here in the new student lounge with Mrs. Terzman and Mrs. Sovis. Um, can you please tell us more about the new student lounge? Uh, yes, yeah, so we thought of the idea as an alternative lunch space or after lunch where kids could come and hang out. Um, it would be like a calm environment, cool lighting, beanbag chairs, different nooks, and um, just a place to kind of relax and be with friends. And uh, what kinds of activities and things will you be will you have available for students? Yeah, so we're envisioning um, like, uh, maybe a foosball table, like board games, um, some different art projects, um, like a reading nook area. Um, you know, it's a work in progress. We might even survey students what they might like to see. 
So, but mostly it's going to be a very relaxing atmosphere. And Mrs. Uh, Solvis, how can students um, sign up to come? Great question. Students just need to go to their wing office and they can get a pass just like your library pass. And once you get that pass, when you go to lunch, after you eat your lunch, you can just show um, the lunchroom staff your pass and come right over to the student lounge. And um, when do you th uh, think this will be available to students to use during lunch? We're hoping for um, late November. I have one more. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it'll be staffed by parent volunteers. So I would be here every Monday and Wednesday, and then there'll be a sign up for like other parents to come in um, and just kind of be part of the fun. So yeah. Cool, cool. Thank, thank you very much. Be sure to come visit the Student Lounge when renovations are completed. This has been Drew and Cole reporting for Trojan TV. Thanks guys. Ms. Sovis is seeking donations for the Student Lounge. See Mr. Tysworth's parent student newsletter if you are interested in helping launch this new space. If you're looking for some fun things to do this weekend, there are a number of community happenings to check out. Traverse City West Senior High is presenting a production of Kiss Me Kate on November 11th through 13th and 18th through 20th. Tickets are now on sale. Grand Traverse Ski Resort is having a ski and snowboard swap tomorrow. You can drop off gear today from 6.30 p.m. through 8 p.m. and can shop tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The event is being held at West Middle School. You can swap 2022 new and used gear. TC North Star Girls are hosting a fun 80s themed skate night. The fundraiser will be held at the Center Ice Arena tonight from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. There will be food, beverages, prizes, and more. Make sure to wear your best 80s gear. You can pre-purchase tickets on Traverse City North Star Girls Facebook page or buy tickets at door. TCAPS has added a new position to all schools this year to help students be more successful in the classroom. Jack and Grant have more on the story. For the past 20 years, students have known Mrs. Selvin as an English and history teacher. This year, she assists in classrooms all around the school. We caught up with her to find out what she does in her new job. So my new job at East Middle School is to be the engagement coach. So that means that about half my day, I am supporting students in um, different sort of behavior management things in the classroom, supporting them so they have fewer negative interactions with their peers and classmates. The other half of my day is um, behind the scenes, supporting teachers in planning um, their lessons, get more movement in their activities, different ways to think about things. Mrs. Sullivan is not alone in the TCAPS organization since they put engagement coaches in every TCAPS building. TCAPS has decided that coaching is a better way to help teacher practices and have customized professional development. Well, first of all, she's a very knowledgeable and experienced social studies teacher, so I enjoy that. But she also has a great way of working with students. and. Um, and the way it's affected my teaching method is, you know, having another teacher in the room certainly changes things, and it's been a positive change. Students have noticed a difference with Mrs. Sullivan helping in the classroom. Um, positively, because when the teacher is teaching and a kid, like, talks or something, she doesn't have to go up and, like, get them to stop. Instead, Miss Sullivan will go and be like, hey, could you stop doing that? It's, so then we don't have to stop the learning. Mrs. Sullivan finds the change to be positive, but she is still getting used to her new role. It is, I'm getting to know students that I didn't know before. At first I was like, oh, but I don't have my kids. Um, and, but I'm getting used to meeting new kids and learning new things. Um, I, I do miss my, um, my roommate, Mrs. Unger. This has been Grant and Jack reporting for Trojan TV. Thanks guys, what a great way for students and teachers to be more engaged in learning. Agreed. Now we have a fun game planned. Three lies and one truth. I love that game. I think it's super fun to see how much we know about our friends. Same. Teachers from around East were asked to tell three lies and one truth. Can you figure out the truth? Let's check it out. So I have a Harley Davidson motorcycle. I have two dogs, three cats, and an iguana. 
I have been to Ni Glacier National Park five times and I have run five marathons. So I have a 2013 Heritage Softail Harley Davidson motorcycle. So we bought that about three years ago and have enjoyed just having it as an option to just have some fun on beautiful sunny days. I grew up on a goat farm. Uh, I had 55 goats on the farm. I love goats. Um, I also taught a semester in Australia back in 2009. And I also published a book in, I think it was 2011, and it was called uh, Surviving Mid Middle School and Teaching Methods. And the last one is my father um, played for the Detroit Pistons. My father played for the Detroit Pistons from 1970 to 1972. Um, he played with uh, Dave Bang, Bob Lanier, uh, who are all stars, Hall of Famers for Detroit, and he played um, a couple seasons there. I am a black belt in Taekwondo. I'm really good at throwing axes. I have a twin brother, and I draw comics outside of school and I sell them online. Yeah, um, I have a target in my backyard and um, for fun we'll throw axes sometimes um, and I'm pretty accurate. I've done a competition at a um, renaissance fair and out of myself and my husband and a couple of our friends I was the most accurate. Um, I can get a bullseye four out of five times. Wow, I did not know Mrs. Files' father was in the NBA. I know, it's crazy. That was a lot of fun. Well, that wraps up this week's episode of Trojan TV. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Trojan TV East, for more great stories. And check out our live morning announcements program every weekday at 7.40 a.m. Have a great weekend, Trojans. Bye. Bye.